the Lion of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty and the Kingdom of God follows and propagates the teachings and the faithful traditions of His Imperial Majesty, which are the faithful traditions and the teachings of indigenous Ethiopian and Hebraic divine truth of the Holy Covenant, of the Al Kidan. Therefore, we must maintain and we must consolidate all those elements that are truly Ethiopian Hebrew and beneficial after, of course, identifying and rejecting all those appendages that prove to be alien, foreign, foreign, and damaging to what is purely Ethiopian Hebrew and purely the Kalakidan or the Covenant. Here are just a few examples from among the many sacred examples and, and elements of our heritage that merit cleansing and retention, retention for their Ethiopian and Ethiopic Hebrew significance. So let's go through a few of these. One, we must identify and recognize the true identification of this Dingal Mariam, the Holy Mother of God, in the prophetic sense as being Ethiopia. And as such, of her son, the incarnate God, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, as an Ethiopian or an Ethiopian Hebrew. Secondly, is the identification with the Tabota Sion or the Ark of the Covenant, the Tabot and the Elat, the tablets, as Kedis Dingal Mariam, the Holy Mother of the Black God, and as her son, the incarnate Black God, our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, Yeshua, Ha Moshi. Thirdly, there's the present implication that must be made and the utilization of the Tabot and the Tzilat in relation to the Adis Kidan or the New Testament doctrine of the Incarnation. Fourthly, the mysterious transformation of the human body of a true Ethiopian Hebrew, a mitmanan, a faithful and a true believer of the Kedus Al Kidan, the Holy Covenant, into a living and a sacred temple of the true God, of the living God, upon whom the divine graces of being the child and the royal and priest of God are bestowed in order, in the order, and because of the covenant of the Melchizedek, and through the blessing of the Memphis Kedus, the Holy Spirit. Fifthly, the use of the Mateb, the prayer cord and the cross-carrying cord, in the Ethiopian sacrament of the baptism to be affected with the three threads, each color in Arunguade Bicha A, or green, yellow, and red, representing the symbol of the rainbow and the rainbow circle throne and the rainbow circle covenant, that Ha Elohim Egziavihir Lotusabhat made the sign of the covenant with Noch. Noah and preserved in the Ethiopian flag, our banner of salvation, rather than the so-called Mateb that the so-called Egyptian Orthodox Church had introduced as black, white, and red, the colors of the modern 
Egyptian national so-called flag. Sixthly, as we've mentioned already, the dates of the incarnation of the Son of God, of Gitachin Na Medanatachin Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, in the womb of the Black Virgin, this Dingal Mariam, at the Annunciation, the announcing of Kedus Gabriel, the Archangel, and of the conception of the Mother of God in the womb of her mother, Hannah, that occur on Tassus 1 and 7 rather than Megabit 29 and Nahase 7, as was imposed by the Egyptian Orthodox Church, respectively. And we must remember, recall, that His Imperial Majesty brought this new Israel out of Egypt after 600 years of pseudo fringe orthodoxy between the prophetic years of 1941 and 1959. Kedamawi Haile Selassie worked to establish the autocephaly status for the Ethiopian or Ethiopic Tawahido Beta Christian, the Ethiopic Church. And the seventh point is the overlapping dates of the birth of the Divine Son, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Mother of God, Kedistim Gumariam, that both occur on Meskarim and Ethiopian New Year, rather than on Tassus 28 or 29 and Ginbot 1. Again, this was imposed upon the Ethiopic Church nearly 1,600 years ago by the Egyptian Orthodox Church's domination, respectively. So stay tuned, my brothers and sisters. More to come.